Am I, uh, am I in the sweet spot? Is this the perfect? Good? Okay. Um, before I start, I want to thank Mr. Jados. Um, we've been over this a couple times, and I, he encouraged me to just um, speak my truth. And even if that meant rewriting my whole piece this morning. <laughs> 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 but he knew, he knew uh, what I wanted to say, and so I, I'm thankful for having him. Um, this this re piece of writing is called uh, The Weight We Carry. And yeah, so... This is how it goes, basically. <laughs> Antoine Rose and, Tra and Trayvon Martin, just names out of an article for some. Two 17-year-old young black men who were once here but now are gone. Two people with the potential to be whatever they wanted had their lives not been cut short. Two people I never met but grieved as if I had. Finding myself shedding tears of frustration because to feel safe in this country was never a given for people like us. This, reala this realization first came in July of 2016 when I was laying in bed watching the news. Outrage following the death of Minnesota black man was the main headline that day. I continued to watch in shock as the Facebook Live video showing Philando Castile's lifeless body came across the screen. While his passenger tried to defuse the situation, I sat wondering, thinking on how he couldn't have imagined in his wildest of dreams that a taillight could lead to his untimely death. I've seen dozens of dash cam videos over the last few years, each one more traumatic than the last. To constantly see young black men killed at the hands of inexperienced officers has become a commonplace in my life. And each time it strikes a different nerve. For each new story, my anxiety and fear build as I'm consistently given new reasons to feel there's a target on my back. The pain I felt seeing those who look like me having, the life taken, having their life taken for the most arbitrary of reasons led me to form a shell of caution I carry with me everywhere I go. This summer, I watched the aftermath of Jason Washington, a member of my church community, getting shot and killed by Portland State officers. And I felt that hurt closer to home than ever before. See, Jason was just trying to make peace, something that I believe should be all of our mission, when a PSU officer opened fire on him. He wasn't given the benefit of the doubt that he intended no harm to, any, to anyone, and for the first time, I saw up close the devastation that his family was left with. We went to Jason's vigil, and our family heard along with his. We prayed and prayed and demanded at times for justice. But as with all these cases, the justice system set up to protect the people had failed them again. Once again, in a personal and upfront way, my confidence was shaken. Now, earlier in the show, you heard about the talk. Um, this is not the one, the one I got was not the one about sex. I did get that, but it was kind of way earlier on, it wasn't as good. <laughs> it, mine was, mine was, I guess it was awkward, anyways. <laughs> the talk I'm talking about is the one all black children will sit through on how to handle being pulled over once they start driving. For me, I got mine early, and I got it in small increments over my life, but I remember the one following Terrence Crutcher's death after he was shot and killed in Tulsa, Oklahoma, my hometown. Me and my little brother were sat down and we were asked what to do in this situation, what we would do in this situation by our parents. And this isn't the kind of sit down where we could just brush it off or half listen. It was given the weight of life or death. My father's bottom line was that in this situation, you're gonna show that officer love. You're gonna show them patience. And you're gonna do everything they ask with a smile. Even if it feels unjust that you're being stopped, we will not give that officer any reason to believe that you pose a threat. I write this to say that there is a weight on me that I'm constantly carrying. One that some days I don't feel at all, but on others I feel more than anything. It's not quite fear but uneasiness brought on by years of seeing people like me having the breath taken out of their lungs. It shaped my movement. So now as I'm walking through the neighborhood to get back home in my hoodie, 
it has to come off, even if it's raining. And the second I'm walking into the grocery store and I got my backpack on and I just want to get some money, so I gotta get a haircut. $25 from the Winko, the local Winko. I always get that um, the day before. And I always pull my wallet out of my pocket and it's in my hand when I'm walking through the store. I want them to know that there's no way, there's no way that I'm, I'm gonna take anything. I have the money. I don't want there to be any doubt And every time I'm walking back home, I'm always smiling at every person uh, on the sidewalk. And I catch myself and I'm like, you know, I'm not at JCPenney right now. I work at JCPenney. And I'm like, I'm not at JCPenney right now. Why am I smiling at these people? Like, I don't even know you. This lady's jogging and I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, there's no reason for me doing this. But I find myself doing it a lot. And I, I think it, I realized it was built out of a mechanism for trying to avoid uh, my body being harmed. I didn't want people to fear me in my community, in my neighborhood. Even if I am the honor roll student, and even I hear it a thousand times, no, no, you're not even that intimidating, man. Like, that can never happen to you. That can never be you. You're never going to be that guy. And then we hear the stories of Antoine Rose, you know, kid in the NHS. He's doing all these different things. He's trying to live his best life, and he's still taken. There is no catalyst. There's no like rule book for the kid who gets shot by the cops. It, it just, it doesn't exist. Sorry. Oops. These are just those small things that I do on the way back from home and from school are just ways I try to keep myself off of a t-shirt. And there's no silver lining to this story. I have no happy ending. But I do believe there is hope for my little brother and there's hope for maybe my children one day, that maybe the officers will begin to work for the people, work to meet them where they are. In fact, I kind of feel, start to feel the weight leave off of my shoulders just talking about it, just thinking about the day where police brutality is just an idea of the past. Maybe the kids of the black teenagers of the next generation will be able to walk through their neighborhood at any hour. And maybe they'll be able to, you know, they'll never have to hear the talk that I got. They'll, know, they'll only have to hear the, the sex talk and that'll be great, be perfect. <laughs> um, for Jason Washington's sake, for Antoine Rose's sake, for Sandra Bland, for a, a myriad of other people who list longer than I can even name in one setting, this is, this is all I can hope for. As we progress forward, though, I can feel the weight lighter is lighter now than ever. So thank you.